To prepare you to create archaeological media, this lecture will cover ethics and accessibility. First off, ethics. In the assigned reading this week, Sarah Colley discusses digital ethics. This is a more recent iteration of an ongoing discussion regarding ethics and archaeological practice. As she states, codes of ethics are frameworks to help professionals and other stakeholders make decisions and judgments. Ethics are always historically contingent, highly dependent on context, and linked to politics of power. There is a fairly extensive literature on ethics and archaeological practice. And there's an attending large literature on ethics in museum settings. And most archaeological organizations have some code of ethics associated. As a generalization, these ethical codes cover the following. Treatment of human remains. So if and how you should excavate human remains and if you should retain or rebury them. Stewardship of the archaeological record, so making sure that you properly record archaeological remains as you excavate and that you actually know how to excavate properly. Accountability consultation with local groups, so how and when you should talk to local people about archaeological excavation. Commercialization, how to or not to engage in for-profit enterprises. This can be tricky. For example, we try not to provide object identification in the department as the person that possesses the artifact can turn around and say, this artifact as authenticated by Dr. Colleen Morgan in the Department of Archaeology and potentially turn around and sell it for a larger profit. Public education outreach. Most ethical codes encourage and promote public education outreach as a direct result of archaeological research. Intellectual property. So who owns the rights to images, even archaeological images? In the past, archaeological organizations have gotten in trouble with indigenous groups for using certain motifs for logos, etc. We'll discuss this further in a moment. Public reporting and publication. Sadly, archaeologists have had a terrible record of not publishing archaeological excavations. For a discipline that destroys its subject, this is near unforgivable. There are further questions regarding where you should publish. Should it be in open access journals? Should the data be publicly accessible when people may go back after the excavation is finished and try metal detecting? Maintaining the archive, even when some of these site reports are published, some of them are not accessible. Further, after excavation, archaeological remains are often stored in unsuitable conditions or lost, or sometimes even sold. Each archaeologist who proposes an excavation should ensure that any resulting materials are properly looked after once the analysis is finished. Training, so this is of yourself and of others. And this harkens back to professionalization and stewardship. Ensure that you are properly training those who are engaging in excavation. You can see this most often in perilous images of excavations where the excavator is at the bottom of a large section. And if you get nothing else from this course, remember this. Never dig over your head. Never dig next to a section that is over 1.2 meters high. Never dig alone. An archaeologist died not a hundred meters from the King's Manor at the multi-angular tower because of an unstable section, and he was recording alone. Bullying and harassment. We will be going over this more in Lecture 6, but there is a persistent culture of bullying and harassment within the culture at large, but sometimes within archaeology. Living together in close quarters can sometimes bring out behavior that is hurtful to those involved. This can be exacerbated by the drinking culture that many archaeologists participate in. We hope that archaeology is undergoing a culture change, but many problems persist, unfortunately. So sometimes companies or research projects have codes of conduct for participants, and this will likely increasingly be the case. The Department of Archaeology at York has a code of conduct, and I'm not going to read this all out loud. This is an excerpt from the Department Code of Conduct, and as you can see, we are expected to treat each other with dignity and respect, and I will post a link to this Code of Conduct in the VLE under Resources. We have further ethical guidelines for conducting research. Avoid harming humans, including yourself, animals, the environment, cultural heritage, the wider community, and the reputation of the university. For any research involving humans, you must get written consent from them. Any research on human tissue less than 100 years old needs ethical review. 
Use of animals needs to be fully justified. For example, the year center must ensure that the animal remains they use for experimental archaeology are ethically sourced. And activities conducted overseas should take account of political, social, and cultural sensitivities in their design and conduct. But boiled down to basics, really, it's does it hurt you? Does it hurt the people you're working with or studying? And does it hurt the reputation of the university? Guess which one the university cares about the most. Undergraduates should consult with their dissertation supervisors about the ethical implications of their research. And I will link to the department's ethics guidelines on the VLE as well. From the reading this week, Sarah Colley recommends the following for digital ethics. Using open source software and platforms. Ensuring that private data is protected, both personal and site data. Making sure the data format is non-proprietary if possible. Being sure to represent yourself and your project openly. Getting permission for all representations. Depositing your data in a reliable archive like the Archaeology Data Service and, in general, being a good digital citizen. York also has its own social media guidelines. York has its own social media guidelines, and we'll be speaking more about being safe online later on. But in general, take part in the conversation, consider it your audience, be respectful, think about what you're posting, why, assume everything that you post is public domain, keep on the right side of the law, maintain intellectual property and commercially sensitive information, maintain academic standards, make sure social media is working for you, and if you have a problem, make sure to talk to your supervisor about it. Sorry to go on about it at length, but it is an ongoing problem, and we want to ensure that you have as many tools at your disposal as possible, and we'll discuss this in more detail in letter lectures. Accessibility. It is important to create resources that are accessible to all, and this is enforced by law. Resources must be perceivable, so the users must be able to recognize the content is there, either using their senses or accessibility aids, such as screen re readers. It must be operable. Users must be able to make the interface work. For example, use the navigation bar or stop and start controls for a video. It must be understandable. The people that you're writing for must be able to understand your content. And robust. Content should work on a web browser and with other technologies such as a phone or a screen reader. Practically, this means that you should structure your content using headers, describe your links accurately, use alt text to describe images, write clearly and simply, and enhance multimedia, create, such as creating captions for videos. I have included a number of images from the Home Office that provide suggestions when you are designing content for a specific audience or a general audience. This one includes designing for users with an anxiety, for users on the autistic spectrum, for users of screen readers, for users with low vision or dyslexia, and for users with physical or motor disabilities or deaf or hard of hearing. It can be difficult to consider all aspects of these, and we have spent a lot of time in archaeology trying to bring our resources up to standard, but there remains much work to be done. You can probably see in my slides where I may have done something wrong, and please feel free to point out any problems you have with accessibility.